Right now, the GOP inching closer to dominating control of the White House, Senate, and just five seats away from retaining control of the House. Donald Trump won the electoral and popular vote despite the Main Street media's negative coverage of him, despite four indictments, despite 91 felony counts, despite two failed assassination attempts, and despite the Harris campaign outspending Trump's camp by more than a billion dollars. Our Washington insider Armstrong Williams joining us now to break down this past election. You're in a, a very special place there at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. I can see it there behind you there, Armstrong. So thank you for waking up extra early with us this morning. The New York Times reported this was so much more than just uh, about the economy. This was their own analysis found most of the nation's 31 hundred counties swinging right since President Biden won back in 2020. So let's talk about some of the key races and what happened. Well, you know, right here in Nevada, where um, Donald Trump won, um, in um, Pennsylvania, where the president won, um, Donald Trump had a message, Vice President Harris had the money. You can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have the right message that connects with everyday voters who feel their plight uh, is lessening every day, uh, you're just not going to win. Now, the mainstream media and political pundits made you believe that the race was razor thin and, and Kamala Harris had a pathway to victory. But the truth is, she never had a pathway to victory because she never had a message. Speaking of money, how did they spend a billion dollars in just a few months and still be $20 million reportedly in debt? Let me tell you how. 350 million on social media. One of the things that was obvious at the Democratic Convention is that social media influencers had a high place and offended many of the old guard in the media. Spending money, when you saw Beyonce, Katy Perry, uh, and, and all the celebrities, the, the, the White House, the uh, campaign was paying for those venues. Oh yes, Taylor Swift, they were paid for it. They just did not show up. Because them, you would not believe the kind of money they spent. And now 20 million in debt, cannot pay their campaign workers, it's very easy because they focus on the wrong things. They abandoned their base, they thought that these influencers could bring young people out to stop Donald Trump. And that strategy not only lost, but young people overwhelmingly voted for Donald Trump. Go yeah. figure. And as we have said, every, as we say every election, quite frankly, no one cares about celebrities. Hollywood does not determine what middle America wants in the White House. And now Democratic analysts are saying the party has not faced a crisis as severe as this since the 1980s when Democrats lost three straight presidential races in a landslide. You know, it has to rebuild, but analysts now say it doesn't know how to rebuild because it has become infiltrated, as you mentioned, with woke ideology, far left identity politics. Uh, to his point, Massachusetts Democratic Congressman Seth Moulton said this. He said, I have two little girls. I don't want them getting run over on a playing field by a male or formerly male athlete. But as a Democrat, I'm supposed to be afraid to say that. And what's interesting, Armstrong, is that he said this in a New York Times article and now he's getting pushback from his own colleagues because he said that. Let me tell you what I, I found fascinating out here in Las Vegas. And I've talked to a lot of people. And you forget, while the economy and the border is important, many people found that there was an assault on their family values. They did not want their little girls in the bathroom with biological men. They didn't want the gender affirming. They didn't want this push of the transgender agenda. They did not want the DEI family matters and in marriage in many minds you can do whatever you want to do in your personal life because god gives you free will but the traditional family is still built on the bedrock between a man and a woman and kamala harris's campaign was an assault on traditional family values polls also showed that when it came to transgender ideology this transcended party lines it was not just a republican issue it was yes. an issue for both democrats and republicans all age groups. Moving forward, Trump has a little more than two weeks, really, or two months, rather, to pick his cabinet. What can we expect? Uh, it's already starting. He's very seasoned. He's been at this before. He has the right people in the place. They've selected the right people, not because of political expediency, because they can do the job and do it quickly. But let me just tell you what Trump, what he has going for him right now. Unlike what the mainstream media is trying to tell us that we're divided, Americans are unified. We are unified in the belief that Donald Trump has been given the mantle, the Congress, to move this country forward. How will he govern? Will he put aside his divisiveness, his own rhetoric, his pettiness? Many people believe that he can do so and do the good of the American people, heal the country, and govern the way a leader should govern.
Washington Insider, Armstrong Williams. Thank you for joining us from Las Vegas. We appreciate it. Have a good week. Thank you, Jay. Yes. Thank you.